Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to Andy's. Those that are um, with us live and those who will be watching this uh, later on. Um, as we come together today to um, recognize uh, the uh, journey of the wise men coming to pay homage and to worship our one true king. Um, now, you all, uh, you may not have noticed or you may have seen in the email, this Zoom meeting is uh, being recorded, um, all except for the uh, breakout rooms. So the plan is that we will have breakout rooms at the end for a, for a few minutes, for a cup of coffee. Um, and then that will be uploaded onto the St. Andrew's YouTube uh, channel uh, later on today. Can't promise exactly what time, but later on today. So the only thing I would say is if you don't wish to appear in this video that is going to be up on YouTube, then please do turn off your video. Now, the, the songs that Charlotte is uh, leading us in are um, recordings. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether playing the recordings cuts off everybody's um, microphone at the same time. Um, but maybe on the safe, to be on the safe side, um, it'd be a good idea to mute when we get to that point so we don't have everybody all trying to sing and join in with Charlotte. Um, and at least one of the recordings is just a tad quiet, so you may need to adjust your own uh, computer volume when we get to that point. So, shall we begin with a prayer? Dear Lord, we uh, pray that you will guide our words and our thoughts today and then our actions as we disperse from gathering around the manger. Amen. Now, Jane is going to introduce uh, in a couple of words the children's activity that came around with the uh, email. Hopefully you all got that um, attachment. Um, and it's <laughs> we can have a go. Um, right, uh, so the aim is to make a camel uh, like this one from an envelope. Charlotte says you need one envelope. I think you might need several envelopes uh, <laughs> because uh, the first work might not work. But um, camels are amazing animals. And uh, as I say in the sheet, we can suppose that they might have been the means by which the wise men traveled to uh, Bethlehem. Um, my main advice about making the camels um, um, uh, is actually, it tells you you can trace the template. Actually, it's much easier if you just draw it uh, freehand on, on the envelope to get the size right. And it's not hard. Um, and um, yeah, then there's some interesting information about camels. Uh, to help you think about epiphany and um, uh, it will need to be parent-led it's not written directly for kids to use it's used via parents right okay thank you so um charlotte's now going to lead our first two songs and as i say hopefully you should all have access to the words uh in charlotte's email um they were in the text of the email um not an attachment uh, hopefully your your uh, computer didn't do what mine did and cut off all the song words, but I've got those now. So over to Charlotte. In this time of song worship, we'll be using two songs. First, King of Kings, then One Thing I Ask. Today, we're remembering the wise men as they went on a journey looking for a king. And now we worship you, Jesus, the King they found, the King of Kings, you who grew up to die on the cross and to come alive again for the healing of the world. Mercy in your eyes. 
men looked forward to seeing the newborn king and when they arrived they worshipped him we too long to see you Jesus and we continue to offer you our worship as we sing one thing I ask
Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you for that. Two beautiful songs there. Now, Anthony and Charlotte together are going to present A Star is Born, uh, another video recording for you. Now, there is, before that, a brief introduction to uh, set the scene uh, for what's coming next. There is an idea that the star of Bethlehem, the star that brought the wise men looking for Jesus, wasn't the single bright star hanging in the sky above a stable that we see on lots of our Christmas cards. Rather, the suggestion is that it was a planetary conjunction, a close approach of planets in the sky, like the one that happened just before this Christmas, but without the clouds getting in the way. The wise men believed that the planets could see what was happening on the earth and could reflect it back to us so that by watching the skies, they could find out about what was happening down on the ground. What follows is based on this idea. Hello, Jupiter. Hi Saturn, long time no see, what is 20 years? You don't have to wear a face mask, you know, we're outdoors. It's all right, I'm happy to keep it on. We need to set a good example, don't we? Oh, I know. You've still got that spot, haven't you? What do they call it? <laughs> the great red spot? I remember <laughs> Jupiter's great red spot. Never, never mind that, never mind that. Now, what have you been up to for these last 20 years? I've got engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Want to see my ring? By the way, did you hear what Martin said? What? About us being able to see what's happening down on the earth and, and telling them about it? Yes. All seems rather unlikely to me. Oh? Well, we can't see very much from up here, can we? They're all really small and very far away can't make out a thing. Ah, now that, my dear Saturn, is where you're mistaken. You need one of these. What are these? Binoculars. What? Binoculars. It's Latin. Bin means... Load of old rubbish. Bin means two. Ocular means to do with your eyes. So you're going to look with your two eyes? That's novel. Never tried that before. No, no, no. If you look through the binoculars, then they make everything seem nearer and more detailed. Have a go. Thank you. Ah, oh, yes. I can definitely see your great red spot Wait. now. No, no, give me those. Give me those. You're not you're supposed to be looking at Earth. Let's see what's happening on the Earth. Anything happening? Have they seen us? No, nothing interesting. Move a bit closer and I'll see if they take more notice then. What was that? The moon. One of yours or one of mine? One of Earth's. You were eclipsed. Uh, did you see any? Did you miss anything? Um, yeah, there are some men, some men pointing at us and waving. They're getting very excited. Oh. I'm coming over all retrograde with excitement. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll come with you too. We'll see if we get a better view from over there. What's happening? What's... Uh, those men, they look like they're going on a journey. Where are they going? Uh, uh, they're following, the, following along a river, long river, 
and there they turned and the following day in another river and they they've stopped where um they're outside uh is it a castle um no it's a palace they stopped they stopped outside a palace and uh, uh they're knocking on the door and they're being left they're in the courtyard and they're in the courtyard and and a man's come out to see them uh he, look, he looks very important he's uh yeah, he's a king. He's wearing a crown. He's a king. Okay. And, yeah, he's... Ooh. What? He doesn't what? look very happy. He doesn't look very... You know, he's talking to them, but he doesn't look very happy at all. Uh, ooh, he's... What was that? Was that that moon again? Yes. Okay. Uh, now, we, Earth really should keep her moons under control, don't you think? She doesn't appear to understand the gravity of the situation. No, she doesn't at all. Right. Um... Um, where are they? What's the, ah, there they are. Uh, they're, ooh, ooh, they're happy to see us again. They're pointing and waving again. That's good. Um, ooh. No, that's odd. What? That's, that is odd. What is odd? That, well, yeah, that is, that, that's very odd. That is very, very... Odd? Uh, yeah, odd would be a good word for it. Strange. I mean, we, that's, that's weird. Are you going to tell me what is odd? Oh, okay. All right. So there's men. After they got excited about seeing us standing here, well, they left the palace, they left the city, and they went to, an, an, they went to a nearby town. And, and there was a man carrying a bag of tools. Right. Uh, and he took them to his house. What, the tools he, or the men? He took the men to his house. Okay. Um, just, it was an ordinary house, not a palace this time, just a house. And there was this woman came out of the house and she was carrying a baby. A baby? A baby. And she looked, she, well, she looked very surprised to see all these people outside her house. Um, and then the men started hugging everybody. They hugged each other. Uh, they hugged the man with the tools. No social distancing they, men. No, they, no. And they hugged the woman with the baby. And they hugged the baby. And they looked like they were very happy about something. Right. Yeah. And then one of them got a bag out of his luggage and he gave it to the man with the tools. It had something shiny in it. It was gold or something like that. Gold. Yeah. You know, and the the other men got bags out of their luggage too, and they gave them to the woman with the baby. Right. And she sniffed them, and she looked she looked surprised again. And then, well, then they just went away. And what happened next? Well, nothing. Nothing. Nothing happened next. The men went back home, uh, back to where they started. They, I mean, they looked happy when they were on their way. They looked like they thought they'd achieved something. And they were slapping each other on the back and they were talking to each other a lot. But, but well, they, they just went home. That's it? Yes. So they did all that. They went all that way just to give presents to an ordinary family. Mm, apparently. And that's what they thought we were telling them about. <sighs> apparently, yes. That is odd. Very odd. What do you think it means? I have no idea. Perhaps we should keep watching and see if anything else happens? Mm, well, yeah, perhaps we should. Uh, I'll see you again in another, what, 20 years? And we'll see what's happening then. Bye. Bye. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> um, <clears throat> right, now, um, we're going to hear from uh, Helen, who is going to read to us a, um, a more modern um, version of the uh, story. So, over to Helen, please. Uh, this is Matthew, chapter 2. The Magi visit Jesus. Sometime after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Men of learning arrived in Israel's capital city, Jerusalem, asking, where's the new king? His star has appeared in the night sky, and we have followed it here from our homelands far to the east so that we can pay him homage. When Herod heard this, he was alarmed and began some research of his own, asking the Jewish religious leaders where they believed the Messiah would be born. 
In Bethlehem, they replied. The ancient prophecy is quite explicit. Bethlehem, your future conceals a wonderful privilege. You will produce a ruler to shepherd God's people. Herod called the travellers to meet him and persuaded them to tell him when exactly they first saw the star. Search in Bethlehem, he told them. Let me know where you can find this baby king. You can be sure I'll want to pay him a visit as soon as I can. The travellers set off and the star led them to the very place where Jesus and his parents were staying. They were overjoyed when they saw Jesus and gave him lavish gifts which expressed the worship of their hearts. Later warned in a dream about Herod's true motives, they slipped quietly out of the country without reporting back to him. Thank you, Helen. So let us, um, in a moment of quiet, think about the words that Helen has read to us and that familiar story. Father, may, the, may my words be your words. May our thoughts be from you and our actions be acts of love for all. Amen. 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 Now, there's something I really like about journeying. And not the sort of tedious motorway driving kind of journeying, but something else. Something where, if you like, somebody else is in control of the transport, the driving, which shall we say, um, like a long train journey. That sort of thing it becomes a mini adventure, especially if it involves things like restaurant car meals or sleeping on board the uh, train. There are, of course, slower means of transport available. Uh, Jane and I used to do um, walking tours, but we've now graduated to cycling tours. And both of those are really enjoyable because you're in control of the journey. You know, you have a map, you have directions. Although I have to confess that getting lost, which has happened on more than one occasion, is also part of that adventure. There is always within me, though, uh, a little element that's looking forward to it being over. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is that I do like to relive those experiences, to um, think about them again, to talk them over, to look at the photos and so on. But the other reason I believe it comes from wanting to tell other people about the adventure, not to boast about what we did, but to share um, the uh, enjoyable experience that we've had. In my view, there's a difference between journeying and traveling. Journeying, I think, is a more rounded, uh, more complete experience. You gather things along the way, you meet people, you have relatable experiences. A journey is an adventure, whereas traveling is simply getting from A to B. Now, for a group of wise men from the East, their journeying would have been quite a different experience. Sometimes we travel a little too speedily to uh, take in what's actually going on around us, but that wouldn't have been the case for them it would have been a real adventure. Um, thinking about the preparation, the provisioning, the working out where to stay or where to pitch their tents and uh, not insignificantly how to stay safe. It may have been a complicated journey to organize, but you know, they had a single purpose with a guiding light maybe two planets, but a guiding light to follow as it leads them to a child. Then they warned not to go back to Herod after they presented their precious gifts. So they face the return journey. And then 
they just disappear from the biblical record. But that isn't journey's end. So what happens to them afterwards? Now, there are many traditions surrounding the wise men. The ones that we know most familiarly are that there are three of them uh, and that they're called Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar. In the Eastern Church, however, there are as many as 12 and they all have different names as well. And the names that we have don't actually appear in any manuscript until about 500 years later. Now, it's also a tradition that they returned to Jerusalem later on and were martyred there. Their bodies eventually ending up as relics in Cologne Cathedral via Milan Cathedral. And there are many, many more customs and traditions uh, in various countries where people celebrate the wise men and their visit. So whatever you think of the historical accuracy of these traditions, it does suggest to me a real curiosity about what actually does happen to them. And that their purpose in the Messiah's story doesn't end at the stable. We have all been on a journey this last year, and I wonder how much of it you're keen to tell others about. There's nobody in this country and across most of the globe that hasn't had an experience of their own virus journey. So who is there to tell? Perhaps our grandchildren or even our great grandchildren, if they've not been old enough to experience it themselves. It may seem to have been quite a static year with lockdowns and cancelled plans, but you know, we have all been on a journey, a journey of discovering who we are and what matters to us, what matters to us as family and what matters to us as a Christian family. It's been a journey of finding out what we can do and what God-given skills we can develop. But we've also been on other journeys. In part, they're a consequence of the virus. We've journeyed to different arrangements of gathering for worship. We've journeyed with technology and have enjoyed some terrific work as we've seen people in their homes and we've heard from so many more people. We've journeyed to new weekday connections of prayer and study together, and we've journeyed to a place of regular communication with those who haven't been able to gather with us on our um, te technical means of, uh, of assembly. And we've been checking that they're OK and we've been passing on God's message of love and hope. And we've also journeyed to a place of knowing one another better and of getting to know members of our community that we really didn't know before. So I think we are closer to each other now. And that's something that we can carry with us into our common future as we work towards making our small part of Christ's journey in community a fit place to encounter Jesus in the 21st century and beyond. The journey of the Magi doesn't end with them locating and revering the Christ child with those hugely significant gifts that they present. What we have is a group of Gentiles journeying to the manger and journeying out from the manger. It's the first indicator in the gospel story that the message of God's gift of his son is intended as a gift for the whole world, Jew and Gentile alike. What do you imagine they talked about on those long days and nights on the road? 
Do you think they discussed whether the traffic was bad on the Jerusalem to Damascus highway? Perhaps they relived that extraordinary encounter that they had. Do they plan perhaps what they will be saying when they get home? Surely on their return, they tell somebody, many people perhaps, what they've seen and who they've met. Knowledge such as this is surely for sharing. We too in this time have traveled to the manger. So after we've presented our gifts to God and caught our breath, we travel from the manger. We too have a story to tell about Jesus with us, about God's great love for us, and about the journey that we've been on. In some ways, though, it's a journey that's only just begun. Amen. So we're now going to move to a time of prayer and Jenny is going to lead our prayers uh, this morning. Hi there, everyone. Uh, if you just give me a second, I'll just find my prayers. Hi, let us um, pray. Dear Father, wonderful creator of this beautiful world, we thank you. Thank you for our family and our friends. Thank you for the joy and laughter we share with them. At the moment, it might only be small snippets of time we get with them or time on Zoom, but we thank you for that time and for those relationships that bring us such richness in our lives. We pray for those who are known to us who are ill. We pray for them as they cope with their sicknesses. We ask for your healing hand to be on them. We pray for doctors' wisdom and nurses' loving care. We thank you for the health service we enjoy in the UK. We are so blessed to have it and the amazing work done by all the NHS. As we enter a new year, we are aware of the exciting possibilities in front of us but also the challenges that still are. We look to you for guidance as we go about our lives and make decisions both in our personal lives and also in our work, whatever that may be. And Father, we pray for our government and for all the difficult decisions they have to make on a national level, decisions that are not clear cut and are tricky. We pray that you give them wisdom as they make those decisions. And we are massively aware of how fortunate we are in Backwell in the UK. And we pray for our world. We are a global community of billions of people, all of whom are special and important to you. We remember our fellow citizens, especially those living in war-torn and unstable countries and those who don't have good health services. Father, we pray for your love and support in those countries. As we look at 2021, a year filled with so much potential, we ask that you help us all to remember you in our daily lives, that we are shining lights of your love for your creation. Help us to spread your hope and your love throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shall we um, say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, in your name, your, kingdom come. your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, Jenny. Um, now Charlotte's going to lead us in our, our third song.
which um, I believe where where are we? It is uh, ah beautiful. The Lord's my shepherd from Psalm twenty three. So uh, over to Charlotte, please. In our final song, we remember God, our shepherd, who will be with us all through this new year, both when we are walking the darkest path and when God is leading us by still waters. Lord, your endless mercy will follow us as we trust in you. that Charlotte. Now um, has anybody spent a bit of time during this gathering in making a camel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the instructions uh, were with the uh, email so there's some guidance there on how to make camels. Um, if you if you have that would be good to see it but if not then maybe we could see those a bit later on and they could be shared around the uh, Andy's email. We can see what people have done. So let's close with our final prayer. Christ our Lord, to whom kings bow down in worship and offer gifts, reveal to us his glory and pour upon us the riches of his grace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all and those we love and care for this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>